Hey everyone, so what you just saw there was my process for making a tenon like you'd make on the bottom of a bowl. What I'm working on today actually are these uh, elements for my Ripple series of wall hanging sculptures, but the um, concept for making tenons is the same, and since these are small and they're pretty quick to cut everything away to make the tenon, I thought I'd take advantage and make a video for any beginning wood turners that are um, having questions about how to make a good strong tenon that will hold the bowl firmly in the chuck. So to start off with, let's go over here to the workbench and we'll talk a little bit about chucks and setting the correct diameter. Um, I've taken the chuck that I was using off the lathe. This is the uh, Vicmark VM100 with the standard jaws that it comes with, which for most of my work are too small, but they work great for these um, little elements that I'm making for the Ripple series here. Um, just the right size, uh, for the tenon that we're going to make for those. And um, there's three things that are important for making a good strong tenon on wood turning. What a lot of beginners don't realize is that this top surface of the jaws right here, that's actually where you get a lot of your holding power. You get more of your holding power, I think, from the, this top surface having a nice flat surface to bear against than you do from you know, the actual dovetail grip itself. Or, or maybe another way to put it is they're equally important. So um, that's the number one thing. And that's why you'll see that my tenons have kind of a double step here, which of course is an idea that I got from David Ellsworth in his excellent book. Um, and, and also it was just the way uh, my teacher showed me at Red Rocks Community College, but I think that's where they got the idea from too. So I'll make this uh, second step where this um, step here gives the top jaws of the tenon a nice flat surface to ride against. That's the first most important thing for making a tenon for me. Uh, the second most important thing is if we wind these jaws in and out, um, each, each set of jaws really only has one diameter that it's ideally good for for making a tenon. Because uh, you can see if we, uh, you know, you can get away with putting a, a big tenon in these jaws. And a lot of times when all of us are beginners and we only have one chuck, that's what we do. Um, but you can see where if I, if I wind these jaws way, way out here, um, that's starting to not look like a circle. And only these um, points of the jaws are going to make contact with the tenon. So what you want to do for each jaw set, and the reason why um, those of us who have been doing this for a while accumulate more and more sets of jaws over time, is that each one has an ideal diameter that's going to be right about before it closes all the way. And that's where it's a true circle, and it's going to make contact with that tenon all the way around. Um, this is because these jaws are machined on a metal lathe as one solid piece of metal and then they're, they're split. I, I don't know if they do that with like a laser cutter or, you know, wh wh however they cut them, there's, there's some sort of kerf and that slight opening accounts for the kerf. If you want to get real precise with the Vicmark line anyway, they'll, they'll tell you the exact um, diameter in millimeters for each jaw set that they have, but you can kind of just eyeball it, you know, and if you're off like a sixteenth of an inch, that's not a big deal. The problem is just like where I was showing before, where you have the jaws wound out way far, um, that's not very effective. So anyway, we'll, we'll set that to the ideal diameter, and then we'll take a pair of dividers, and we'll, we'll set those to match that diameter and that's how we uh, find that measurement over at the lathe. Um, so uh, we talked about the first two things, uh, the, the flat shoulder for the top of the jaws to ride on, the uh, diameter, you know, that gives you the, the strongest hold. And, and the third thing, of course, is the actual dovetail shape. We'll go over that a little bit on the lathe. And, and I would submit that that third thing is the least important. You do want to try to match the dovetail shape, but it's not as important as a lot of people um, think. And what I see among beginning turners a lot is they'll put a lot of energy into copying that, you know, that, that dovetail uh, profile there um, to the uh, exclusion of the other two things. So anyway, let's go back over to the lathe and I'll show you how I actually cut these. All right, so we're back at the lathe. I've got this next one um, mounted between centers. I'm just using the top of the chuck jaws themselves as a um, driver for this piece. 
Uh, probably not a technique that I'd recommend for um, an absolute beginner, you know, you could, you could um, start this uh, on a face plate or a screw chuck would be a more secure method. But for these little things, um, you know, and once you have some experience turning, this, this is a tip that I picked up from my friend Keith Gottschall, and, and it works great, you know, um, for just a quick way to drive something if you know you're not going to be taking terribly aggressive cuts. So anyway, that's how that's mounted. Um, the tools that I'm going to use to make a tannin, I just use my regular bull gouge with an Ellsworth style grind on it, Ellsworth or side grind, however you want to say that. Um, and then I use my uh, spindle gouge, and that, that's all I use to cut tenons. I don't use any specialty scrapers or, or tools like that. Um, basically, the bowl gouge does uh, most of the cutting, and then the spindle gouge will come in and, and clean up in the corner for us, and I'll show you that now. So the first cut I'm going to make, I've got the um, gouge here and I have the uh, bevel lined up basically perpendicular uh, or parallel to the lathe axis, I mean, and I'm just going to take a series of bites going in this way to um, start to get down to the diameter of this tenon. A lot of times I'll see a beginner try to roll the gouge over like this and cut in this way to level things off, and that's not incorrect. I mean, I can go ahead and do one of those just to show you. Um, you could come in and cut this way, but when you do something like that, if you think about this side grain blank, you're going to be cutting into end grain a lot of the time. So it's a lot easier instead of making that cut going this way to just make a series of bites like this and bring things down in that manner. When I think I'm getting close, I'll uh, you know hold my dividers up here. This is kind of a weird angle for me, but for the camera to be able to see it, I'd usually hold it more like that. So I'm getting pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and make a few more of those cuts. Another cut I do is I'll come down here to depth and then I'll switch to a pull cut. Coming back like that, drop the handle and come back into a pull cut. That should be pretty close now. Let's see uh, see what I got. Again, I'll hold it up for the camera to see a little better and gotta hold it over this way for me to see. So you can see I'm not quite down there yet. I'll probably do like one more cut with the bowl gouge. I don't go all the way down to the depth with, um, or the diameter uh, shown by the dividers because I want to leave a little bit of room for when I come and make the cut with the spindle gouge. Just now let's see how we're looking. Yeah, so I'm almost down to the diameter, um, but leaving just enough room to do the cuts that I'll show you with the spindle gouge. So that's, that's basically the tenon. Now from here I'm going to make a series of cuts to make that flat area I was telling you about for the, the top of the jaws. Same, same cut. Coming in here like this. And now I've got that second step that's going to be uh, the area for the top of the jaws to rest on. Now to clean everything up, I'm going to switch over to my spindle gouge and I'm going to make just a couple of cuts to, um, you know, first of all match the dovetail angle. So of course how we do that is if, you know, if you look at the spindle gouge, it's going to cut in the direction that the bevel is. So if we, if we cut like that, um, that would be right, you know, parallel along the axis. So what we're going to do is just kick that out a little bit so that going in like that will copy the dovetail angle, and that looks like this. So we just go all the way down. The advantage of the spindle gouge is it allows you to get right into that corner, and then we'll roll it over, and now we've got the bevel pointing parallel to the lathe axis, and that's going to cut our uh, surface here for the top of the jaws. Go right into that corner there. Might have to come back and take another cut right there. But now I've got what looks to me like a nice tenon. 
um, that uh, appropriately matches the dovetail shape. It has a nice uh, perpendicular to the lathe axis surface on here for the top of the jaws to bear against, and this should fit really nice. Uh, let me go get my chuck key and we'll turn it around and find out. Get this out of the way. Get this out of the way. Turn this around here. And you can see that tenon wound up uh, slightly bigger. The jaws are open a little more than where I showed you over there on the workbench, but that's still going to work. I mean, that's still uh, within the realm of what will work for these jaws. Again, you just wouldn't want to open them way up to where only the very corners of that jaw is making, um, you know, contact. So let's turn it on. And, uh, you know, yeah, so that's a good, nice, good hold. It may look like it's not running true, but it is It is running very true. I just, uh, in the previous step, I didn't um, take care of the surface. So that was, uh, that was bumpy before. But that's all there is to it, to making a good tenon. Uh, I hope this video was helpful, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.